Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to talk about my Google interview experience for the L4 level that is SD3. So in Google, a fresher is a L3 level which is SD2 and the next level is L4 which is SD3 and the next is L5 and so on. So this interview experience is for India location that is for Google Hyderabad office. And uh, I had this interview a couple of years back when I was at DOE shop but uh, this is not a very recent interview experience but a lot of things has not changed between you know that time and now because I mean Google interview format remains the same for the L4 level they only ask data structures and algorithms. Uh, the only thing which has changed is basically the difficulty level of the question because when I had my interview they used to ask a bit difficult questions because at that time they were very selective about the people they used to hire but recently uh, in past few years they have you know directed their interview level a bit and you all must have also seen that they had done a lot of hiring because they had opened new office in India which was at in Bangalore and they needed to hire a lot of people and they needed to hire them faster. So if you want to do if you want to hire a lot of folks and you want to hire them fast so you cannot be very selective about the people you hire. I mean uh, if you want to fill your openings very quickly then you have to do compromise at some level but I think that difficulty level is now going to come back at Google because now they are again going to be very selective about the people they hire because you have seen that in United States Feds have raised hiked repo rates and the loan rates have increased and companies are not making a lot of money. I mean a lot of money is not at their disposal. But anyways let's jump into my interview experience. So uh, a recruiter had basically reached out to, on, to me on LinkedIn and she was hiring for uh, the opening which they had in Google Hyderabad office. So she explained me the role and uh, she told me that if you know I am interested then I can send her my resume and then they will proceed with the interview procedure. So I sent her my resume, my resume was shortlisted. So she decided to, so she basically invited me at to a call with her and uh, she had already told me that in the call she will be asking some basic questions related to data structures, algorithms, time and space, complexity. Uh, when I heard that I was a bit surprised but yeah in Google what happens that sometimes even HR takes a simple screening round for you and if you are able to pass that then only you will go to the technical interviews. So I had the talk with HR and she asked some very basic questions. I mean uh, you could easily solve those questions orally like one of the questions I remember was that what is the time complexity of search in a hash table. So worst worst case time complexity. So worst case time complexity is actually O n where n is are the number of keys in the hash table because you know it might be possible that all keys are having collision. So all keys might be stored at in one particular bucket only. So that's why the time complexity is O n like a lot of candidates make a mistake saying that the worst case time complexity is O 1. It is not O 1 in a hash table. And there were similar questions like that only. So I passed that screening round. Uh, she then uh, scheduled the first round for the first technical interview which was basically a telephonic round and she had already explained me the interview procedure like it will be a 45 minutes interview and two coding questions will be asked like two data structure and algorithm questions will be there i am supposed to solve both of them i am supposed to provide the optimal solution for both of them and code both of them and she already told me that i should produce the best code like the production level code a code that, that is very clean because like again they are very you know specific about the code you are writing. I mean, if you, you know, let's say you gave them the optimal solution, but you did not produce a very good quality code, your code has a lot of repetition and it does not follow best practices like variable naming is messed up, function names are not very good and are not very readable. So uh, you might get rejected there as well. But anyway, she had, she had already explained me all of these things and she told me that uh, like I will be coding on a Google Doc so she told me that I should already practice that. I mean, there will be no ID which will be provided to me. So I should practice coding on Google Doc because it does not provide any auto completion and you know, any sort of indentation and all those things. So she told me that to be familiar with the coding language which I am using because uh, auto completion won't be there. And they already, you know, before starting the interview procedure, so they will already ask you like what programming language you prefer and you will have to use that programming language in your in all the interviews which you will be held. So I told that I am good with C++ so eventually she scheduled my interview. So there came the telephonic round 45 minutes interview to coding questions. So in the telephonic round the question which was I, I was asked is reservoirs was a question based on the concepts of reservoir sampling. So you can basically refer this question here that is this is present on lead code uh, question number 382 linked list random node. 
you can read this question and see what it asks but the only difference was that in case of in my case there wasn't a linguist there was an array like i have also created a video on this reservoir sampling question <coughs> the question was something like this only that you are given an array of n integers you have to return a random number from array and each number in the array must have the same probability of getting chosen that is 1 by n the only thing was that you do not know <coughs> the number of elements present in the array that is you do not know this n and i was able to solve this question and eventually he asked the second question which was instead of returning one number one random number i was supposed to return k random numbers so uh, i have linked the video in the description of this particular video that is this where the person has also explained how you can find k random numbers so anyways i passed this telephonic round i i think i was able to produce a good code as well there were no repetition i mean there were i followed the dry principle that is do not repeat yourself variable namings and function namings were also good code was very readable and maintainable <coughs> move to the on site rounds so basically hr told me that i have moved i have qualified this round and I, then the on site will be held so there came the on site round so she had scheduled like three rounds uh, at first and she was like if i am able to you know pass these three rounds then i will move to then i will have another two rounds so anyways round one came so in round one they asked a problem which was based on binary search and prefix sum so this problem is also present on lead code like this was this problem random pick with weight you can see this problem and try to solve it but this can be solved using binary search and prefix sum and then the second question which was asked is this shuffle the array so this seems like an easy question but uh this is actually not a easy question because i was supposed to solve it in o of 1 space so again i have also created a video on this particular uh, question you can watch that that how we can solve it using o of 1 space so i did good in round 1 then i had round 2 in round 2 like usually in google interviews you will have at least one round where dynamic programming questions will be asked i mean a lot of my friends had interviewed for google and each every one of them was asked a dynamic programming question so the dp question which i was asked was something related to this only which is present on code forces so this is a uh, i mean this might seem intimidating to you that this f problem was asked because usually on code forces f problems are very hard but uh, this is not a very hard problem i mean uh, the question was similar to this i mean the concept which this question uses to solve the dynamic the dynamic programming concept which this question uses i mean that question can also be solved using that concept only and the only thing is that if you know the dp trick which is to be used in this then the question is very easy so it took me a lot of time to solve this question i mean i think i took the entire interview and then the interviewer was not able to ask the second question anyways then i had round three in round three i was asked a problem which was based on recursion and stack so this problem is present here on lead code which is decode string so i think uh it took me some time to solve this question as well and i also messed up the code i mean i did not produce a very good code so again interviewer was interviewer was not able to ask the second question in this round as well so uh after this i i mean these three rounds concluded and then i hr told me like what was the result for this so eventually i was rejected for this particular round i mean she told me that uh, i will not move to the round four and round five because uh in these three rounds only one interviewer had given me a positive feedback which was in the interviewer who was from round one the round two and round three interviewer had given negative feedbacks i mean they had told me uh, what the feedback which they had given me was this that in the round two i received the feedback that uh it took me a lot of time to come to this dp solution the problem which they had asked and it consumed i mean i consumed the entire interview and the code which i had produced also had some bugs i mean they did not handle all edge cases and since i took the entire interview in solving the first problem only so the interviewer was not able to ask the second question second problem which she had in mind and in round three i again in round three also i got the similar feedback the one thing which was one feedback which was given in round three was that uh, i did not use the c plus plus constructs very well i mean there were some things which are already provided by c plus plus language but i was like you know writing them from scratch in my code like uh, uh, what i wanted to do here is that i wanted to create it create a string with let's say a character c repeated n times okay so i was like using a for loop iterating n times and then you know appending the character c in the std string but std string provides a constructor which is i think this n comma which you can use so like this was the feedback i received that i did not 
know C++ very well. I mean, I was not using the APIs and constructs provided by the language. I was writing them from scratch. So again, you should also be very good with the programming language you are using in the interview. But eventually, should, had I, I mean, I was rejected, had I moved to, had I, if I was selected, then, you know, I would have moved to round four and round five. Round four is usually, uh, I mean, one of those rounds is usually a Googliness round and another round would have been a data structures and algorithms round. So for L4 level, Google does not ask system design. I mean, if you are interviewing for the role of SRE, that is site reliability engineering, then Google might ask system design because uh, some of my friends who had interviewed for SRE role at Google for the location of Dublin, Ireland and for London as well, they were asked system design interviews, even in for the fresher interviews. Anyways, the key takeaways from like my interview is that the things which I learned and the things and the mistakes which I did, which you guys should not do. Like first thing is practice a lot. I mean, there's no substitute for that. Practice a lot of hard questions on lead code because uh, <clears throat> because after that, I mean, usually regret is the only thing which is left with you. I mean, you will be like, oh, I was asked this hard problem and my friend was asked the easier problem. And that's why I was I was not able to qualify. He was able to qualify. So, I mean, that is all worthless at the end. I mean, you cannot predict. I mean, interviews are unpredictable at Google. I mean, they might ask very easy questions. They might ask very hard problems as well. So it is better to, you know, equip yourself with the necessary tools. Practice a lot of questions. I mean, I don't know, man, 500, 000, 1500 problems as much as you can practice. Practice at various websites like Code Forces, Code Chefs, Podge. It's, I mean, as much as you can practice, that is the simple thing because tech interviews of google and facebook are like they are very heavily focused on data structures and algorithms so you should be very good in them and you should practice interview style coding i mean like you are supposed to solve two problems in 45 minutes so you should you know practice like that that even when you are practicing you give yourself a 45 minutes time constraint and see if you are able to solve two problems end to end like you are able to come to the optimized solution and produce the best quality code the code does not have any bugs and all again the programming language which you are using for coding it is better to know in and out of it like if it pro provides certain semantics certain construct certain apis then you should know those instead of writing them from scratch in your code as i like what i'm trying to highlight here is the example which i had given here that uh, like std string provides a constructor which you can use to create a string of n characters but i was like writing those from scratch it is also good to dry run your code you should think about edge cases like don't let the interviewer point them out to you because uh, you might get negative points for that some people have been rejected for this as well because their code did not handle all the edge cases think fast type faster i mean during interview you are writing on google doc i mean usually when we are at home we are you know or in our practices we usually use some kind of id where we have autocomplete and all and all those things so we are able to produce the code very fast but in interview and in Google interview, like you do not have all those things. So it is better to, you know, practice yourself, equip yourself with those things. And again, use best coding practices. Like do not produce codes which have a lot of repetition. Do not produce code which is not maintainable, readable, like use readable uh, variable and function names. Anyways, that was all I had for this particular video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe and comment and I'll see you all next time.